Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, to the audience uh, to our Indigene Digital Summit. I'm uh, excited to uh, introduce uh, Thomas testrup -Turp, um, for a case study following the theme of Beyond Reach and Frequency. Um, he's going to give us a real-life case study about the journey from share of voice to share of engagement. Thomas is a corporate vice president at Novo Nordisk, and he has more than 20 years of experience across the pharmaceutical industry in advertising, marketing, consultancy, digital marketing, and strategy. He has a proven track record of successful leadership positions at multi-level reporting, multi-million dollar budget responsibility. Um, Thomas is recognized for his collaboration, no negotiation skills, and ability to lead teams toward a common vision and objective. And he earned his Master of Science in Strategy and Organization Management from Aarhus Business College and is an MBA from Copenhagen Business School. And I personally had the pleasure over the last several years to talk with Thomas strategically and value his insights. So thank you, Thomas, so much for joining us today and sharing your experience. Thank you, and thanks for letting me join. So um, let's share the slides and... Uh... And hi, and uh, welcome everyone. My name is Thomas testrup Um work with uh, Novo Nordisk in uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, and excited to, to be here and, and share a bit of our experience um, in terms of how we are moving uh, our train of thought uh, in commercial. Um, so I have a little provoking title here called Share of Voice, from Share of Voice to Share of Engagement. Um, and that's really to kind of stir up, uh, hopefully a good debate around this topic. Uh, but I would like to say that, you know, Novo Nordisk is probably not that much different than many other pharma companies. Uh, share voice has and still is very, very important um, to a, a commercial model uh, such as ours. And uh, I'm no, by no means saying we should forget all about that and all we've learned and only focus on the new. But what I am saying is that it's time to look at uh, how we engage with our customers and also how we, we, we measure that. Uh, so today I'm just going to give you some few theoretical slides, uh, if you will. Uh, to, to ponder on the aspect of, of moving from a share of voice to a more share of engagement or quality of voice, what some, some also call it, uh, uh, perspective. And, and then I'm going to give you three uh, practical use cases or examples uh, of how uh, we are looking at this and how uh, you could be looking at it. And then last but not least, uh, talk a little bit about you know, possible roadmaps or steps you might need to take uh, if you want to turn your organization uh, into the same uh, path. Uh, so that's really the, uh, the agenda for the presentation. And I'm, I'm going to start off with a picture that I bet you've seen before. If you haven't, now is a good time. So I've seen this about 100 times. Uh, and, you know, for Novo Nordisk, like everybody else, everything was going uh, pretty well. And then COVID came around, right? And, and I think the first time uh, I saw this slide, you know, uh, that wrecking ball really looked, looked was looking scary, scary right? And, and the fact of the matter is, uh, everything is still going pretty well from from where we're sitting, um, and 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 that made me reflect: uh, Did it miss us? Uh, just did it just swing by, or what really happened, right? And as we can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel for for for, for many countries, uh, thankfully, uh, I'm also reflecting on on this picture, and and coming to the conclusion that you know it uh, it didn't disrupt our business, but it made us think that we can do think, things differently. And I actually do think it's a good thing. Uh, we have realized that not in, only in our, in our way of working together as colleagues and human beings in the organization, things has changed, but also in the way we can engage with our customers, ultimately for the benefit of the patients, can change. Uh, so I, I like this one. That's why I, I, I want to show it uh, again uh, more as a, as a way of reflecting on how we need to look at our commercial models and how we engage with customers and how we measure that engagement. Uh, and then I'm going to show you another slide that I'm going to bet you've seen before. This this one, right? So so I've seen it again in many different shapes and forms, and it's always fun to ask questions about uh, uh, the size of the different uh, elements in this in this picture. I think everyone can agree that there was a pre-COVID era where where the traditional channels. Uh, the field channel uh, was very dominant for, for good reason. And then we had a COVID time where everybody was scrambling, right? And, and really turning to a digital only approach out of need. Uh, so was uh, Novo Nordisk. And then we're moving into this post COVID-19 era 
where again, you can certainly debate the thickness of the different um, engagement uh, channels. And we are in, in, uh, debating that. And we're also trying to figure out what's the right level of engagement, where should we focus? One thing I think we can agree on that there's more digital and you know probably even more digital. And the point I'm trying to make here is that not, that's not necessarily good just to throw in more emails or make more noise, but we need to start to look and look into how do we create the best share of engagement? How do we orchestrate around the customers with the right type of content and the right type of channels to make a better experience to, that ultimately drives uh, a business? Uh, so that's the reason why I'm, I'm showing this one. So that's where we are at. Probably uh, many of you are the same. Uh, and the question, the, the answer is not just to turn up the dial and make more noise. The answer is to figure out how do we best um, uh, orchestrate around the customer and utilize the channels um, appropriately. Um, so this is some recent research from uh, IQVIA uh, pointing to trends in the traditional customer engagement model that needs to change and that is changing. And I'm not going to read all the from and two points here, but there's a couple of a couple of points that I do want to highlight. Uh, where I'm also seeing a change, right? So from the spray and pray point in time blast to customer journeys, for sure. Uh, digital is mainly a pull channel. Of course, emails you, you can push, but you're not getting far in the engagement if unless the content is engaging and you can actually turn on that pull, right? So so journeys are, are here to stay and it's a discipline we need to be better at, especially in commercial. Face-to-face uh, uh, -face field is an, still a very important part of that journey. Um, from Salesforce excellence to customer experience excellence, you've heard a lot about it already. Uh, I was also once in, in Salesforce uh, operations and optimization. That discipline needs to evolve uh, and, and be much more holistic and encompass multiple touch points. And then the last one, um, you, we, we can't live with digital islands anymore uh, or just islands or silos. We need to have our uh, data house in order. We need to have foundational platforms that allow us to have an integrated and omni-channel approach to, um, to customer engagement, that, that you need to get fixed. Uh, and so that's what I'm seeing uh, appearing right now also in, in, in our company. And then the, the last theory slide, if I don't uh, recollect wrongly, models are changing and so should they. But before you start changing your model, take a hard look at your strategy. Take a hard look at your, of course, your brand strategy, but also your customer strategy, and then figure out what is the right engagement model uh, for that brand and for that customer. And it depends on many things, right? But but I think this model is actually quite good at looking at where were you, where what is COVID driving in terms of change, and what is also changed customer preferences driving, because customers are changing their 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 engagement uh, patterns and and the preferences. That you need to combine with where are your brands in your life cycle uh, and also what's your access opportunities. So you need to figure out what's your sweet spot in terms of a much more front-led, which I call personal push engagement towards a customer-led or digital pull engagement. And it's probably not either or. Um, and I would argue you need good data to figure out where your, your, your engagement should lie vis-a-vis -vis your brand strategy, vis-a-vis -vis your customer segmentation and customer type. So, so uh, uh, figuring out exactly where you are, that's, that's, the, that's the challenge. I like to, to also look into a bit more of the details in terms of the customer needs, the content, the channels, the execution, and the transition trigger points that uh, guide you to what you should do. So let, let's take customer needs. If you have a much more customer-led digital pull uh, approach, it is about having timely, relevant, and educational content via channels that fits the customer versus a much more frontline push where you really need to be that customer concierge or orchestrator out there in the field to solve real challenges uh, that means um, something to the uh, HCP or customer in mind. Going down to um, transition and trigger points, something we are working on much more is is the concept of digital hand raisers. There are customers that you may be engaging with much more through a digital uh, pull, but if they show higher levels of engagement, higher share of engagement that you can pick up through digital footprints, maybe it's the time to actually transition that customer into a much more front-led uh, engagement. Um, 
So again, measuring the engagement can can tell you if a customer is increasing their engagement with you because you have something of relevance or they're disengaging, opting out, not uh, in, uh, responding to your content uh, or to your channel engagements, and then having to move the customer further down um, uh, in levels. And ultimately, where you can uh, in the US measure TRX, uh, not so much possible in the rest of the world. Uh, but I think on, and I think I know you absolutely also in the rest of the world need to have a much better sense of where you're individual customers are. So brick level information, good. You need to try to get to a, a, deep, a, a level further down, uh, being able to measure individual engagement, engagements with uh, non-US customers um, uh, as well. So not enough theory. Let's um, look at some practical examples. Uh, how are we trying to evolve our customer engagement model? Um, and maybe how can you do the same? Uh, based on three practical use cases, uh, the whole concept of reach, what, what is that? What should you be looking for? Contribution, what channels are contributing? What kind of content, content are cost contributing to your engagement? And ultimately, what share of engagement do you have with the individual customers and what um, action should you derive from, uh, from that? First use case, and it starts with a business question. And I think that's really, really important. It's about the questions. Uh, and, and you as a business leader, you need to ask the right questions and then figure out how to answer them. And before you start asking too many questions, you need to work on that, as I said before, data house in order. You need to have the basics uh, right. Otherwise, you're not getting far here. Uh, worst, uh, worst case, you're basically arguing with each other on which data uh, is right if you don't have your business rules in, in, in order, right? So the first business question here is, am I even reaching my customers? And how am, and how am I reaching them? through physical, digital, or blended channels. Uh, and, and these are, are, are real numbers on the, on the screen here. Uh, hopefully you can't see them, uh, they're blended out. Uh, but where, this is where we are practically in, in, in Nomen Nordic right now, looking into our reach, our potential reach, and our channel mix. So first step is really to uncover the, the reach gaps you might have in a certain uh, area. Uh, if the front door is closing or you have access issues, or you simply want to engage more through digital channels, can you even reach them? And if not, step two, what's your plans to be able to do that? And step three, where you don't have the digital reach, you need to really start collecting those consents, create uh, attractive consent uh, collection campaigns to drive up that reach, to so have a broad opportunity you know, to create engagement with the customers. Uh, and again, uh, our actionable insights here that we are now uh, gaining is what's our um, actual reach versus our potential reach among uh, target audiences. Um, uh, how, what's the ratio face-to-face uh, uh, -face digital? How many of our target audiences are actually consented? And where do we need maybe to address some, some gaps? So that's uh, one very practical example of how we're turning our perspective to be a more broader holistic uh, reach um, uh, type of, uh, of metric. Second uh, business question is, okay, so I've got my reach down. Uh, what channels are then really contributing to higher levels of engagement among our target customers and what content engages most? Uh, and again, you're not getting any answers uh, out of this unless you have your data in, in, in order and also have a pretty strong content supply chain that fuel your different uh, uh, channels. Uh, that needs to happen with a strong content discipline. Again, tagging all the practical fun stuff. If you don't get this right, you're not going to be able, able to answer uh, questions like this. Uh, but if you do, then you can also start identifying the most powerful channels of engagement. You can then start to redesign or design your engagement plans towards the channels with the highest impact vis-a-vis -vis your brand strategy and your target customers and execute upon those. So as the picture shows here, we, we actually do now have a much better insight into where we're reaching our customers, through which channel channels, what content seem to resonate and drive up share of engagement and the ability to then drive that insight into tweaked uh, campaigns and, and execution uh, at a local level. And at a global level where, where I sit, ultimately the goal is of course also to utilize that insight to tweak and, and redefine our brand uh, and customer engagement uh, strategies. So um, really closing that uh, 360 full circle view of our engagement. And I apologize for the, maybe you can hear that, but the rain is really coming down hard here in, in Denmark. So uh, if you can hear some noise, that's it. Uh, third use case, uh, identifying the customers with the highest share of engagement. So answering a question like, 
who are my top 100 um, uh, customers with the highest highest share of engagement uh, engagement score and what actually drives that you know uh, several years ago um, I could only dream of, of, of being able to answer that question in the US where we've had uh, prescriber level uh, data and now we are actually able to starting to be able to answer it outside the US with prescriber level information um, and again identifying uh, the journeys and channels and content that drive the highest share of engagement and trying to cor correlate that to TRX uh, if possible is a, a crucial important step and then uh, designing your in, uh, customer journeys and leveraging the channels uh, that deliver on then that in share engagement ex and execution so um, combining your reach combining your insight into contribution uh, of channels and content really enabling you to figure out what doctors in within your target group are engaging the most and what drives that but also of course looking at doctors that you would perceive valuable uh, through a value contribution uh, assessment and figuring out how to reach them how to reach them in channels that are contributing more and looking at how to drive up share of engagement with that particular uh, customer uh, type when you start to get insights like this it is really pivotal to how you can design your campaigns uh, fuel your strategy execution out there in the in the real world and also uh, shift your resources to the channel that matters uh, the most uh, so that's what's three practical uh, use cases and examples of what we are doing uh, to really drive our perspective moving from a pure share voice but also to a, a larger share of engagement or quality of share voice uh, in 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 noble are we there yet uh, ob obviously not uh, of course not but we are there with some of the more mature markets where we've started uh, several years ago uh, and it's all it's all in the data you, you got to get that foundation right and then there's a lot in terms of process uh, uh, change uh, in terms of journey thinking and last but certainly not least capabilities within people in marketing in sales in cost in co commercial excellence and, and business insights uh, that needs to change and be upgraded okay so what, what future are we looking into? Um, well, in, in Novo, as in many other larger pharmaceutical companies, we've been very good at um, providing insight to what has happened. Uh, various monitors, patient flow, business performance, historical views, we've got it down. I call that the lagging, lagging metrics, right? What we're doing with this, what I just showed you, is becoming much more strong in, in, in telling a story about what is happening out there and having much more uh, real-time data on that and that was the three examples I just showed you uh, we couldn't do that uh, a while back uh, now we are actually able to have a much better view on that and where we are going which is very exciting uh, is, is being able to in, in a higher level of degree predict what will be happening so what's the sensitivity of certain target audiences when exposed to certain types of engagement what can we predict in terms of uptake where do we need to focus um, to get the biggest bang for the buck so both in terms of resources but certainly also in terms of impact and that's really the predictive met metrics that we should be looking to so I, I foresee a, a an evolution of the commercial excellence function and the commercial excellence uh, capabilities it has many names but really being able to do all of them because it's not about not doing the first it's about being able to uh, um, look at the whole perspective here and that's that's an exciting future that uh, I hope to be able to be part of um, as well. And then you probably ask, that's great. What do I need to do? Well, you need, there's unfortunately a lot of things you need to do if you haven't done anything. Uh, but again, uh, your data foundations, and so your, your platforms needs to be in order. Your processes needs to be uh, um, uh, changed uh, and focus much more on journeys. And then your people, be it your sales, marketing, medical access folks, Commercial ops uh, needs a capability uh, upgrade as well. Um, one example that I'm going to bring to you here is, is the work between um, commercial and IT, which is pivotal if this is to work. And um, I've, I've given you given you an, a little bit of um, a busy slide, but still uh, I, I can't say it's simple. Uh, but it's important that uh, we 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 uh, we get things right, uh, focusing on a set of functional capabilities within commercial, in, in my opinion and a large set of technical capabilities within a global or commercial uh, IT uh, organization. Uh, and if we start with the, with the uh, commercial part, segmentation, uh, some would call it advanced segmentation targeting, channel excellence, content excellence, reaching coverage, 
uh, and customer engagement planning or customer journey planning and ultimately CX customer experience are some of, some of the skill sets that needs to be grown within uh, commercial. And then we have a, a matrix where where I basically believe that both commercial and IT needs to be working much closer together in agile uh, scrum teams um, through either product ownership or, or, or other ways, but they simply need to be working closer uh, around business intelligence, data visualization, business rule definition, advanced data analytics, uh, AA, uh, so advanced in, uh, analytics incubation and innovation within commercial to create that ownership, but working very closely with IT to actually ensure that the data foundation is there and we can build the, the, the right architecture and technical capabilities to bring that uh, to life. And then there's a bunch of, um, of data, uh, data and IT capabilities that simply needs to be there uh, in, in order to really get good data. Uh, and I'm not gonna read through it. Uh, we, we, are, we are moving far further in, in Novo on this, uh, but we were not perfect uh, like uh, anybody else. Uh, so we have gaps. Um, and, and when you look at this, you're probably also gonna identify a few gaps uh, of your own but I really encourage you to create your own map and you create your own roadmap uh, towards the vision that you establish. So, and then one, one more thing that is, uh, is needed and I'm trying to make a little bit fun here, but it's, I'm dead serious. Successful transformation of an engagement model requires good, clean data. And it's not like uh, our good friend Dilbert here, uh, you know, find the data you have, even though it's bad, then make it fit. That, that's not gonna bring you uh, that far. Uh, unfortunately, I, I think uh, that's a lot. That is is what what is happening today. That's got to change. And then, when you have a good data foundation and a good data structure, you need to be really, really careful that we uh, don't end, uh, end up with, with death death by dashboards. That we are really, really good at creating a lot of dashboards, and nobody's getting it, and nobody's able to translate that into action. So, that's actually some of the things that I'm that, uh, not not concerning, but I'm very attentive to right now. Uh, we have a lot of good people creating uh, great stuff, but it needs to transcend into the uh, parts of the organization actually executing it. If we don't uh, get that final step, I'm afraid we will uh, not uh, succeed. So thank you very much for listening. I know we have some time for, for questions and Q&A. Uh, so I hope you found it, found it enjoyable um, and learned a, a couple of things that you. Thank you very much. Hey, Thomas, thank you so much. It's uh, really uh, fantastic to see not just the theory, but actually the practice and how the leading organizations are changing the way that they're evolving toward the uh, share of engagement. Um, one question, um, let's see how much time we have. But when you measure share of engagement across multiple channels, do you value them all the same? So is a rep visit the same as an email send or open or click, or do you like uh, give different values and, and, and how do you go about that? Great question. We give for different values. It's a short answer. And yes, you know, uh, uh, rep engagement is still very high, very high on the, uh, on the scoring. And again, uh, I've been out there, I've seen uh, it not work and I've seen it work. And when you have that great rep in front of the right doctor who has the time, it, it does magic. Um, is it uh, cheap? No. Uh, so uh, we need to also figure out uh, how can we maybe complement that, enhance that, and really make that uh, great rep um, even shine more, right? That that's what we need to do. So uh, different to answer your question is not valued the same, uh, but uh, the way we are evaluating it, evaluating it right now, I think we need to con constantly look at that. And okay. again, back to the uh, doctor profiling, and because you know some actually don't prefer that, or maybe you can't even get in, right? So we're we're not there at, at that level, but uh, now we're making it possible. Great. Do you think there's a difference on your company portfolio, whether you have mature drugs, specialized, biosimilars, or do you think that's a model that applies to any type of portfolio? No, that's what I was trying to communicate with the slide five. I think, you know, really figuring out what, where's your, where's your, what's your strategy, right? what, 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 what field are you playing in and how do you, how do you win that? And what's your brand um, uh, life cycle stage? Clearly huge differences. Uh, of course, your competition, many, many factors. And, and again, I would like to make it simple, but it's not that simple. But you need to look at that before you start making any engagement plans and making any choices. Um, thank you. Um, I think we're coming to the end of the session. Um, and uh, I know we could talk a lot more about this, Thomas. Again, I encourage everybody to network uh, using the platform. I may be asking some one-on-one -on -one question that we couldn't answer here. And uh, this is a topic that we're going to dive uh, much deeper, not just in this IDS, 
but uh, all along in the strategic conversation, we have an energy with our clients and uh, with clients like Thomas. Thank you so much, Thomas. And um, I uh, look forward to seeing you again soon, hopefully in person. Likewise, and thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you.